Lotar, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout. Today was my max effort lower day. Of course, they're all max effort days now because we do training maxes at the start. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated and like my other videos for the day. Uh, we got a lot of work done today, a lot to talk about. Quickly go over the squat. I said I'm going to go back and mess with the straight bar now. Now that my shoulder mobility has returned enough that I can use it, it's not comfortable. Someone already had said on the on the preview, hey, it looked like, did you hurt your back the way you got under that? It's like, no, I had to get my shoulder back out from under the bar. It's my shoulder. Back is fine. Um, look at my strength on good mornings, reverse hypers. My lower back is not really at risk squatting. However, uh, this one felt relatively heavy. I, this felt heavier than I thought it would, honestly. Yeah, I know that it's over 600 at the top, but I can squat 601 with one of the other bars. Uh, so I got to get still get used to the straight bar. But I noticed as I dropped down, I've already had a depth check from the side on these by a legit, really good, world class level coach. He said I'd get white lights and calm. Not worried about it. And I want to keep working on getting a hair deeper, anyways. But I noticed as I was ramping up through those that my hamstring got a little irritated on the ramp up. Even with that that 405 plus the chains, my hamstring got a little irritated. And it's right at the spot that really lights up when I do a glute ham raise. And I haven't been doing glute ham raises. So do we need to be concerned about that? I would say yes. Number two, my quads were absolutely a limit on that squat. I felt my quads light up more than when I did 601 with the cambered bar, the 600 or the 601 with the cambered bar. The whole outer part of my quad, right? That entire head felt like someone hit it with a hammer. So I've said before, I need to keep bringing up good mornings just for good measure, but we, we definitely need to work quads. So I decided today we take a little more direct approach and we'll get into that. Uh, let's talk about the Good morning first. Now some people will be like, didn't you do a little more than this with the, the cambered bar? Yes, but we're not counting it. The reason I'm not counting the 421 with the, the safety squat bar. Sorry, I got tongue tied there. We know with the camber bar I do 545. I'm not counting the 421 with the safety bar before because I pretty much hit the straps and it, it failed and I squatted it up. It was not a clean rep. So the most I've done with this bar is 401. So I got 406 today, and it was just pretty challenging. That was pretty close to an all-out max. Uh, and like I said, my goal with these training maxes is to get above 90%. We're not trying to hit absolute all-out one rep maxes. So again, when people say, well, I thought you were a little stronger than this or that on that lift, I'm like, well, yeah. And why wouldn't you think that these are training maxes? And we do two every workout. So I'm hitting eight training maxes a week to keep my, uh, again, max effort work up to practice heavy singles, to get the intramuscular coordination, right? All the things we need to hit big max lifts. I, I'm maintaining that very effectively and trying to get little small PRs up as we go. Trying to just get little PRs all the way up while rotating through all these different lifts. But I mean, I do four upper and four lower body lifts every week right now for a, for a training max. We don't want them to be super grindy. I'm not trying to push them to 100%. Right? I'm just trying to get maybe 95%, 97% of a max. We're just trying to get them above 90%. So that again, we hit the up, all the upper threshold fibers we need, get the intramuscular coordination we want. Okay, Look for our weak links. As we find weak links on any of these lists, we need to keep improving it. So these, I misloaded the bar. And I thought, man, this first 20 rep set was tough. Yeah, I went 10 pounds over, and I did math incorrectly. You know, guess what happens? I had the heavy safety bar on my neck. You get a little lightheaded sometimes. The neck training is paying off for that, for keeping my neck a little bit better, though, on, on the safety bar work. And again, I don't train all the angles of the neck. I think that causes sleep apnea. I don't think it's wise. Tell guys who are going to do a bunch of neck training, just use gear at that point. You're getting one of the biggest side effects of anabolics without the gains. <laughs> That's stupid. It's stupid. So I don't train the front and the sides and all of that. I'm just training the back, just with neck extensions, because that's what matters for the safety bar. I do need to make this safety bar more endurable, because I want to get my safety bar squat up to 600. All right, I want to get the safety bar good morning up to 500. I need my neck to be tough, but it just needs to be at that one angle. 
but I misloaded. So yeah, I got a little lightheaded because I did the, the math for adding the extra plates as if I only had three plates per side, because three plates per side on this bar is 340, 331, right? And so I just said, oh, I need to get 261 on the bar for my calculation, so I'll just put another 30 pounds. And for some reason, I was thinking ending in 31. Well, it's 241 when you have two plates on this bar. It's a 61 pound bar. That's what Titan advertises it as. And that's what it is heavier than a 45, you can tell. So I put two plates and another 30 pounds on. So I put 271. It was tough. It was hard. Especially the third set. I'm like, my God. And then I realized after the set, when I went to unload it and looked at both sides and realized I had put an extra five pound on each side over what I should have had, well, hypothetically, my safety bar squat max might be up as much as 15 to 20 pounds higher. It might be 20 pounds higher now. We might want to test that coming up. Might need to see where it is. And I'm focused on, on really opening up my hips on these so that I can get deep. You guys notice, uh, I'm sure I hit depth on most of these reps. A few I'm sure I didn't, but I hit depth on a pretty good chunk of them out of these 60 reps. But my God, was it tough. You can tell this is the third set here. As so I'm racking, I think I had to take a breather. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> but that's the upside with all these 20s. You know, that's the thing with the 20 rep sets. It'll test your conditioning. And I need to do some videos. I probably, I might do a breakfast chat on why I'm doing the 20s. It's a lot to do. It has to do with connective tissue, maximizing body composition, all that stuff. It's going to be goals for me. So what we have to do, if I want to reach the lifting goals that I want to reach and the sort of weight classes that I want to reach down, we have to be extreme with what we do. I'm going to have to go pretty far. Okay, I'm going to have to go deeper, deeper down that rabbit hole and dig in deeper and do some harder things than a lot of guys I'm going to compete against are willing to do. And that includes 20 rep squats, right? 20 rep good mornings. Maximizing my body composition to the best of the viability on my frame. All right. Yes, that will have to include losing some body fat because I'll grow out of my weight class if I'm not careful. I'll have to trim fat to make weight. All right. So these things matter. And this is my main conditioning. I've spread everything out. Now everything is training maxes, high reps, and less cardio. I've even, I'm using all the high reps to replace my GPP. I need even my GPP, which this counts as my GPP, to have an enormous hypertrophic response. And then I'm using the list cardio just to keep energy turnover up, to keep recovery high. Right? The heart health and other benefits and capillary beds and, and the blood flow we get from the list cardio improves recovery. I have to be a recovery machine. Have to. Okay, I've got to maximize my body composition. I have to maximize my tendon hypertrophy, bone density. We've got to dig deep because I want it. I want to win. I want to be the best. And so, again, we're going to have to do things. We've got to do things in a way that gets us not hurt. And a lot of this higher rep stuff, the whole key to this is makes you get not hurt. Maxing on rotating on all the random stuff helps you to not get hurt. Like, people... When you see these idiots who come in and say, oh, I can't believe you're doing that, I'm like, well, you go deadlift 700 pounds in your 40s and do it without getting hurt. Anyone who's been doing this a long time knows why I do all these random different bars and chains and bands for the maxes. It actually keeps your injury rate lower. It makes you more injury resilient. I'll go so far as to say it, even experts like Dr. Feigenbaum have said that. Okay, it's not my opinion. World class level experts agree with it. So let's come over to the point. People who aren't doing it 
are fucking stupid. When you have so many experts who agree on that, if you're not doing it, you want to get hurt. That is obviously the only reason you're not doing it. You obviously either are ignorant or you want to get hurt. And I hate to have to say that because I get people who come in and try to be critical of that. And that's why I just ban people who are critical at this point. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for the stupidity. I don't. I'm busy trying to be the best. I'm busy coaching full time. I, I just don't have time for it. I don't want to be bothered with it. Get up to speed. Get up to speed on the information that's out there. I'm not making any of this stuff up myself. I test a hell of a lot of it with my lifters. But you guys saw the good mornings. So we based that off the new PR. Those were hard too. Third said I was dying. Then we got in and we just, I decided, what do I need to do for quads? I had already added in some of those leg extensions with the bands. But today I'm not going to do them. Like, let's just hammer the quads with more high rep work. Hip belt squats. And the first one I had set up here a little high. I couldn't quite get the depth I wanted. But the second and third set, I got it adjusted, got everything adjusted to where going off these boxes, I could get deep. I can get into a deep squat. I can get below parallel, get nice and deep, and just hammer my quads, hips, everything else. And it's not that hard to get up and down. Notice, I mean, it it's, it's doesn't look particularly easy, but it's not difficult. And it's not difficult after doing 20 reps to get yourself unhooked. That's because I'm running, uh, I almost need to maybe get some pictures later of what I'm doing on the other end. I've actually even got it set up so it can't slide off. I take my really, really strong clamps, like my axle bar type clamps, that Rogue makes, and they're hard to get on and off. And I'm putting one on the plates and putting another one on the end of the bar so that my little sling setup can't slide off the end e e either. Because I was a little worried about that with this setup. I'm like, it could, and if something goes wrong, it could slip out, and that could be ugly. So I made it to where it can't slide off easily either. And then I've got a flat edge on one of them. And I can actually set that flat edge right there on that box. And so I'm using actually a little canvas sling wrapped around the bar that I latch onto with the uh, Spud Ink belt. Okay. But these last two sets really got what I wanted now. Obviously, people are like, you probably had some reps in reserve, clearly. We'll ramp this up. I only did, a, I believe, 180 pounds. Right? 180 pounds. But it, belt squats are much, much harder than back squats in terms of the weight you use. But we'll work it up. We'll start getting these up to 20 rep maxes. I feel like because I haven't done these in a long time, and again, new setup on it, I'd get a nice novel training response after doing all that other work. My quads actually got a pretty good pump from doing this. Got a pretty good pump. And uh, I felt it was very effective. I'm going to have to start ramping it a little heavier. Ramp it a little heavier as we go. Then, glute ham raises. Why? Because I, I feel that area, and it could just be connective tissue. It could be that head of the muscle getting a little weak. If I'm feeling that trying to push back with that bar on those squats, that's a potential area of injury. It's a potential weak link. And if it's an area that your body feels is weak, your body is going to limit how much weight it lets you sit back with. Okay, your body will limit you to avoid injury. And if that part of my hamstring, if my nervous system decides that that tendon or, or that head of the muscle is a potential weak link when I go to sit way back and squat deeper, it's going to limit my depth with a max weight. And there's nothing you can do about it. When your nervous system sets those limits in, you're not going to bypass them. So we better build that area up. And you know what? Hamstrings help with deep squats. And I haven't done these in a while. So I was surprised. I, I got 20. I got 20 on all three sets. Now I had to rest pause the last set. And my quads were lit. My quads were not happy with me. I'm sorry, my hamstrings. I'm just going to get stuff wrong this entire vlog. You know what? I'm going to get stuff wrong this whole vlog. I've already called the wrong barbell. already called the wrong muscle. Who cares? You guys know what I am saying. So... I'm just going to run with it because I don't want to restart this. So my hamstrings were lit. They got a lot of work today, and especially those good mornings. And I actually find this the safety bar hits my hamstrings harder than the cambered bar, even with a lighter weight. 
when I'm doing good mornings. Now, I get more low back and I get more glute off that, uh, that cambered bar. But the safety bar seems to hit my upper back and my hamstrings more. And I use both. We're going to use both throughout the rotation all the time. I do more work with the safety bar than the cambered bar, even though I'm stronger on it. So it's a two to one ratio. For those who are trying to figure it out, uh, I do two workouts with the safety bar for squat and good morning rep work to my one with the cambered bar. So the cambered bar only gets used about, you know, once every 10 days. But I'm stronger on it in general. And I'm going to keep PRing with it, I have a feeling. But they, they do emphasize different muscles. So my hamstrings got hit hard today because we, we PR'd on the good morning, which means we had to up the rep work. And the rep work was, was hard. It was grueling today. All the rep work was just grueling today. But if you want to win, that's what you do. And you get into the habits. You get into the habits of just doing it. But, you know, we, I managed to get all my sets of 20. And this is the hardest setting that I can physically fit inside of. I can't get into the vice. I'm on setting 9 out of 10 as far as difficulty. Uh, I, I can't physically get. I've checked it before. I would need a ladder I, the only way I could use the next setting because I can't get my leg in there at all. My calf is too big. So I would have to build, get a step ladder or build some steps to come up to it to use that setting. And it's not worth it. We'll just do more reps with, <laughs> with the 9. Most people can't do a single rep with the 9 setting anyways. The majority of people can't do one. So I'm good to go. I've got strong hamstrings. But I was surprised. You know, this, is, this goes to show us something. I've been able to maintain my 20 reps with this without having done it. Even though that technically not all angles of my hamstring have been worked, but we've done a lot of hamstring work with the good mornings and the reverse hyper. Even though it doesn't use all the functions of the hamstring that this device does, our big movements can maintain our, our strength on the smaller movements. Even if not all the heads get working, that's always what I've, we've noted over time. It's been able to do that. But we need to come back and work on it directly, if for no other reason other than the tendons, because maybe that tendon isn't being worked correctly to the degree that we might want it to. Because if I'm feeling that irritation there, let's come back over to everything we're saying. We have to build bigger tendons. Bigger, thicker tendons, and that's one reason we're doing all this rep work. Bigger, thicker tendons increase maximum strength potential. They improve neuromuscular efficiency. And for those who, who don't grasp that, if a tendon, if your brain senses a tendon is too small or too weak to do what it's trying to do safely, it will limit how much force it will produce at the muscular level. So that's one reason I'm working a lot more on tendons. And that's one reason I'm doing a lot of the rep work. It's one reason we're doing the real high rep band work. Build stronger tendons and connective tissue. And to do a lot of volume that can maximize hypertrophy because all these different rep ranges, multiple rep ranges can maximize hypertrophy. These are very easy on recovery. The downside, they don't build neuromuscular efficiency like lower reps do. But we're doing eight training maxes every week. We don't, we don't need the lower reps. If I'm doing that many maxes, everything will peak on its own. This sort of volume is really stupidly hard when you do it. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Like 20 rep squats, my God. But afterwards, you feel fine. They don't beat you up. So people are like, oh, God, there's a lot of volume. How do you recover? Because it's, it's, it's lightweight. It's fine. I recover really quickly from it. Uh, compared to when I'm doing threes and fives, this is so much easier on recovery. It's harder work. And it all feels light. It's just grueling. Everything burns. You're breathing hard. And it's grueling. It's the best way to describe it. But you recover really, really easy. Like you feel fine later. You might be a little lightheaded, but you don't hurt afterwards. You might get some cramping that you have to deal with and massage out. But we did obviously the uh, axle bar rows because I need it for my deadlift. And then we finished up with my reverse hypers. And these, you know, I've been trying to do five sets. I'm like, let's just stick with that theme of getting as strong as possible on three sets of 20. Three sets. Look, if we're hitting all the muscles from every angle that we need to, we shouldn't need more than three sets on an exercise. I'm doing 20 reps. That's like a lot, a lot of work inside of three sets. 
if they're hard challenging sets the tension is right and we increase our 20 rep sets over time that's fine three sets is fine considering every one of my muscles is getting more than one angle hit more than one exercise mm, do them a three and that's not counting all the maxes and I do want to highlight that that should probably be clarified people need to understand for this system to work the way I'm doing it you do need the heavy singles you're going to get very weak if you do nothing but a bunch of 20s. You're going to get very weak. And the, the singles don't take that much time. Guys, it, to ramp up to a training max or two doesn't take that much time unless you're trying to go for all out one rep maxes. If you're just ramping up to a challenging single, dude, you can just load up and be there in 10 minutes. Be done. A lot of times you can do it super fast. Pop, pop, pop. All this rep work takes a lot more time. So it's, it's not time consuming. So people who get into that nonsense, they're, they're full of shit. Get in and hit singles, especially if you're going to do something like this. Uh, but everything was pretty well trashed today. Every muscle involved in the squatting and deadlift got worked pretty hard. I got a lot done uh, and it was it was tiring feel a lot better now uh, I've got some other stuff to get done today so this will probably be rendering or whatever and I'll come back and upload it in a bit so I hope it's been informative and enjoyable and I will talk to you guys next time